NATO forces fighting against Russia. Operation Arctic Fortress. Lieutenant Jake Wilkins gripped the controls of his F-35 fighter jet, the powerful engines roaring as he tore across the frozen skies over Norway. His squad of four aircraft wove through the mountain peaks, racing towards the front lines. Eagle Eye, this is Dagger Lead, Jake's voice crackled over the calm, we're two minutes out from the objective area. What's the situation on the ground? The response came from a NATO AWACS plane circling high overhead. Dagger lead, enemy armor and air defenses are dug in deep around Narvik. Russian tanks, mobile missile launders, and mechanized infantry. It's an absolute fortress. You'll be facing heavy resistance. Jake's jaw clenched as he studied his tactical display. Three days ago, Russia had launched a massive invasion of Norway in a bid to seize vital oil and gas resources. NATO had responded by rushing reinforcements, but the Russian forces had gained a foothold and were proving disturbingly difficult to dislodge. Copy that, Eagle Eye. Tell the boys in Narvik that cavalry's arrived. Dagger squad, go weapons hot. Time to kick some Russian ass. As the order was given, four separate tones pinged in the cockpit as the advanced targeting systems acquired multiple hostiles in range. All around Jake, the air defense screens lit up with streams of ground-launched missiles lancing towards them. Break! Break! He shouted, pulling hard on the stick. His jet went into a gut-wrenching corkscrew as flares and chaff spewed from the undercarriage, confusing the incoming warheads. Jake's wingman wasn't so lucky. A proximity-fused rocket detonated mere meters from Dagger 3's tail, the shockwave and shrapnel shredding the rear fuselage. The stricken jet spun wildly, trailing oily smoke before slamming nose-first into an icy mountain face. Mustang is down. Mustang is down, the panicked voice of Dagger 2 came over the radio. Jake grunted, sweat beating across his brow as he pulled out of the dive. Forget Mustang, stay frosty. We're not leaving until these Russians get the message. His finger contracted around the trigger as the pipper settled over the first target, a mobile surface-to-air missile battery dug into the tree line. Two air-to-ground missiles streaked forth, the Russian position disappearing in a fireball. All around them, the valley transformed into a hellish panorama as the remaining NATO jets engaged. Rockets and cannon fire lashed across the battlefield as the Russians responded with a firestorm of anti-aircraft artillery. A fierce aerial ballet played out as the F-35s used their maneuverability and stealth to find fleeting windows to slip their ordnance through the deadly curtain of flak. On the ground, heavy rumbles heralded the beginning of a massive artillery barrage. NATO's big guns had joined the fight, their shells exploding among Russian tank formations with earth-shaking detonations. Smoke and fire billowed skyward as armored behemoths were crippled or simply vaporized. Despite their heroic efforts, the punishing Russian defenses were slowly taking a toll. A flight of attack helicopters sent to support Dagger Squad was chewed apart by low-altitude SAM strikes, the fiery wreckage raining down in scattered pieces. With a lurch of the stomach, Jake realized he was the last jet still airborne. Dagger 4, Call sign, Preacher, had been swatted from the sky by a direct hit from a Tunguska mobile anti-air platform. There would be no reinforcements, he would need to see this through alone. This is dagger lead to all NATO ground forces, get ready for I firm passes. I'm coming in hot with everything I've got. Banking hard, Jake set up for a series of airstrikes that would put any Tinnel ground attack pilot to shame. With daring precision, he weaved between tendrils of flak, his engines leaving visible heat ripples in the air as he pounded one hostile target after the next. Laser-guided bombs shredded the air defenses while cluster munitions suppressed enemy armor, sowing a deadly spread of bomblets that detonated under their treads. Civilian homes and buildings collapsed under the tremors as the entire valley became an inferno of death and destruction. But for every jet downed and position cleared, ten more Russian tanks and mobile batteries seemed to lumber forth. Two near misses rocked Jake's jet as proximity charges detonated all around him, the shockwaves leaving the aircraft bucking like a wild bronco. Warning lights blared as entire systems were knocked offline. He was running on fumes, 
both in terms of fuel and ammunition. This was his last strafing run. With his engines screaming in protest, Jake gave one final salvo of missiles and cannon fire everything he had left. A line of Russian tanks, APCs, and supply trucks erupted in hellish fireballs. Around them, infantry were cut down in droves as the fearsome 25mm rotary cannon swept across their ranks. In the distance, a low roar heralded a wave of NATO tanks, IFVs, and mechanized companies storming over the ridges, taking advantage of the shattered enemy defenses around Narvik. With a breathless curse, Jake pulled up and away, his jet leaving a ghostly vapor trail over the still raging battle beneath. Good shootin', dagger lead, eagle eye's voice crackled with relief. That broke their backs. The NATO counterattack can roll through. Jake didn't respond. His eyes were locked on the fuel gauge that had finally ticked down to zero. Both engines flamed out simultaneously as the F-35 went into an inert glide. He had just enough altitude to stretch his chute, but not enough speed or control for anything resembling a landing. This is dagger lead, I'm punching out. Tell my kid, ah, never mind. He knows I love him. With a hard yank of the ejection handle, the explosive charges fired, blasting the canopy in seat away from the falling jet. Jake's body slammed against the straps as his parachute deployed. The last thing he saw before blacking out was the sprawling conflict zone rushing up towards him amidst a curtain of flaming debris. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Booming thunder rolled across the dark, snow-blanketed battlefield as howitzer shells tore through the frozen air. Occasional gunfire and grenade bursts stabbed through the night, cold muzzle flashes briefly illuminating the remnants of a town that just hours before had been a vital strongpoint in Russia's invasion of northern Norway. Around Narvik, the fighting had devolved into bitter house-to-house -house combat, the structures and streets a charnel abattoir of burnt-out vehicles, heaped bodies, and rubble. NATO and Russian forces were entrenched in a hellish stalemate, gaining and losing ground in bloody increments as the hours dragged by. In the thick of the worst fighting was a squad of American Marines, the five mud-streaked and utterly exhausted soldiers taking cover inside the ruined remnants of a tavern. Shards of glass, splintered furniture, and spent shell casings littered the gore-soaked floorboards beneath their feet. How many frags we got left? The squad sergeant growled, a fresh dressing bound over one eye. Down to three grenades and a couple of flashbangs, replied a wiry lance corporal nicknamed Picket. He gestured with his rifle towards a pile of stripped Russian weapons and equipment in the corner. We've got some Russ gear we could try firing back at M, but not a lot of ammo. The sounds of Spetsnaz soldiers rallying outside elicited a torrent of colorful curses from the beleaguered Marines. The distinctive clink and clatter of fresh reinforcements preparing a renewed assault had them scrambling for new positions. Ah hell, Zeke, this ain't looking too good, a private by the name of Deacon muttered, racking the bolt of his rifle with a shaking hand. We're about outa. An explosion of shattering glass cut him off as something fell through a window facing the street. The dark, cylindrical shape clattered and rolled across the floor, coming to a stop at their feet. Grenade, the sergeant roared, grabbing the ordnance and whipping it back through the window without a second thought. There was a muffled, wump outside, followed by a hail of debris as shrapnel showered across the ruins. A tense silence fell as the marines waited for the counterattack that was sure to come. The eerie silence was shattered by a grating roll of armored treads rumbling down the street outside. Pickett risked a peek through a shattered window and his eyes widened. Uh, fellas? We got a real big problem out here. The sergeant crawled over, cursing as he twisted his bulky frame to look. Sweet baptizing Christ. A massive Russian T-90M main battle tank was trundling towards their position, its low-slung turret traversing slowly as the thermal optics scanned for targets. The sleek Stora countermeasures system atop the chassis kept spouting flares and obscurant clouds to confuse any incoming munitions. It was the very latest in Russian armor technology, nigh impervious to anything the marines could throw at it. Why didn't those jarheads call this thing in? Deacon hissed, gripping his rifle with white knuckles. The tank ground to a halt a mere 30 meters away. 
Its main gun traversed with ponderous weight, the muzzle centered on their shattered haven. A thunderous boom shook the ground as the smoothbore cannon fired, the high explosive round smashing through the tavern's reinforced walls in a spray of pulverized concrete and timber. Zeke, the squad's largest marine, was quite literally torn in half by the colossal blast. His goggles, dog tags, and a grotesque mist of blood and viscera showered the rest of the men as they were flung like ragdolls. Ah Jesus, Jesus. Deacon whimpered, clutching a shattered arm as he writhed on the floor amidst the devastation. The tank's coaxial guns were stitching the room with heavy machine gun fire, blasting holes through the pinned marines and anything that moved. The sergeant dragged himself into what meager cover remained, his face a mask of agony as his legs trembled, destroyed by the blast. With a trembling hand, he withdrew the last smoke grenade from his vest and primed it with his teeth. Out the back, now, he shouted hoarsely, hurling the canister through the rear exit. Thick twin banks of obscuring smoke billowed forth, allowing Pickett and Deacon to drag themselves to relative safety. I got a solution for that rusky son of a bitch, the sergeant growled, retrieving a single rocket-propelled grenade from his webbing. He jammed it into the launching cup of his rifle, struggling to find purchase for the weapon on his ragged stumps. The tank's engine revved powerfully, clawing forward through the smoke. Only solid forms were visible through the curtain, an ungainly metal beast with jaws of death inexorably bearing down on them. Taking a deep, Shuddering breath against the fiery pain, the sergeant steadied his aim and pulled the trigger. With a hollow thunk, the RPG streaked across the narrow kill zone. The round struck the tank squarely in its frontal glassy, the most heavily armored portion of its hull. There was a muffled crump as the warhead detonated, but the advanced composite matrix held against the shaped charge. The rocket did little more than scorch the thick armor plate. W was that it, Sarge? Pickett stammered as muzzle flashes strobed through the thinning smoke. That all we got? Zero. Both engines flamed out simultaneously as the F-35 went into an inert glide. He had just enough altitude to stretch his chute, but not enough speed or control for anything resembling a landing. This is dagger lead, I'm punching out. Tell my kid, ah, uh, never mind. He knows I love him. With a hard yank of the ejection handle, the explosive charges fired, blasting the canopy in seat away from the falling jet. Jake's body slammed against the straps as his parachute deployed. The last thing he saw before blacking out was the sprawling conflict zone rushing up towards him amidst a curtain of flaming debris. Asterisk asterisk asterisk. Booming thunder rolled across the dark, snow-blanketed battlefield as howitzer shells tore through the frozen air. Occasional gunfire and grenade bursts stabbed through the night, cold muzzle flashes briefly illuminating the remnants of a town that just hours before had been a vital strongpoint in Russia's invasion of northern Norway. Around Narvik, the fighting had devolved into bitter house-to-house -house combat, the structures and streets a charnel abattoir of burnt-out vehicles, heaped bodies, and rubble. NATO and Russian forces were entrenched in a hellish stalemate, gaining and losing ground in bloody increments as the hours dragged by. Every silence was shattered by a grating roll of armored treads rumbling down the street outside. Pickett risked a peek through a shattered window and his eyes widened. Uh, fellas? We got a real big problem out here. The sergeant crawled over, cursing as he twisted his bulky frame to look. Sweet baptizing Christ. A massive Russian T-90M main battle tank was trundling towards their position, its low-slung turret traversing slowly as the thermal optics scanned for targets. The sleek Stora countermeasures system atop the chassis kept spouting flares and obscurant clouds to confuse any incoming munitions. It was the very latest in Russian armor technology, nigh impervious to anything the marines could throw at it. Why didn't those jarheads call this thing in? Deacon hissed, gripping his rifle with white knuckles. The tank ground to a halt a mere 30 meters away. Its main gun traversed with ponderous weight, the muzzle centered on their shattered haven. A thunderous boom shook the ground as the smoothbore cannon fired, the high explosive round smashing through the tavern's reinforced walls in a spray of pulverized concrete and timber. Zeke, 
the squad's largest marine, was quite literally torn in half by the colossal blast. His goggles, dog tags, and a grotesque mist of blood and viscera showered the rest of the men as they were flung like ragdolls. Ah Jesus, Jesus. Deacon whimpered, clutching a shattered arm as he writhed on the floor amidst the devastation. The tank's coaxial guns were stitching the room with heavy machine gun fire, blasting holes through the pinned marines and anything that moved. The sergeant dragged himself into what meager cover remained, his face a mask of agony as his legs trembled, destroyed by the blast. With a trembling hand, he withdrew the last smoke grenade from his vest and primed it with his teeth. Out the back, now, he shouted hoarsely, hurling the canister through the rear exit. Thick twin banks of obscuring smoke billowed forth, allowing Pickett and Deacon to drag themselves to relative safety. I got a solution for that rusky son of a bitch, the sergeant growled, retrieving a single rocket-propelled grenade from his webbing. He jammed it into the launching cup of his rifle, struggling to find purchase for the weapon on his ragged stumps. The tank's engine revved powerfully, clawing forward through the smoke. Only solid forms were visible through the curtain, an ungainly metal beast with jaws of death inexorably bearing down on them. Taking a deep, shuddering breath against the fiery pain, the sergeant steadied his aim and pulled the trigger. With a hollow thunk, the RPG streaked across the narrow kill zone. The round struck the tank squarely in its frontal glassy, the most heavily armored portion of its hull. There was a muffled crump as the warhead detonated, but the advanced composite matrix held against the shaped charge. The rocket did little more than scorch the thick armor plate. W was that it, Sarge? Pickett stammered as muzzle flashes strobed through the thinning smoke. That all we got? The sergeant coughed a gout of bloody spittle, his body shaking from shock as he reached into his blouse pocket. His fingers wrapped around his last tangible resort, a simple rectangular device no larger than a pack of smokes. With his final reserves of strength, he activated the detonator. A catastrophic blast erupted from below the tank as the anti-armor mine ripped through its underbelly, punching straight through the thin lower hull. Blazing jets of flame and shrapnel sprayed skyward as the vehicle's turret was blasted clean off its chassis, landing upside down in the wreckage of a burned-out bus shelter. The ravaged hulk of the tank continued pushing forward a few more meters on its momentum before its systems went into emergency shutdown, hydraulics leaking and metal groaning. Silence fell over the smoldering street once more as the fires started to sputter. Deacon crawled towards the fallen sergeant, his face ashen and stricken. Ah, ah hell, Gunny, don't go dying on us now. The older marine smiled faintly, droplets of blood tracing the lines around his eyes. My last mine, last round. Had to make it, count, boy. He released a weary sigh, his head slumping back against the rubble. Tears streaked Deacon's filthy face as he cradled the sergeant in his unbroken arm. Did ya have to blow that tank up all hairy, Gunny? Coulda just, knocked out a tread or something. Where's, the fun in that, the sergeant rasped with grim humor. He gestured weakly towards Pickett, who was crouched nearby in stunned silence. You, take these pups and get out of this rat hole. Rendezvous with the regiment. Send that Russian bear home, all sick and sorry. With that, the old marine's eyes drifted shut, his hand going limp. Gunny? Hey, hey Gunny. Deacon shook the lifeless form, frantically searching for signs of breath or movement. After several agonizing seconds, his body slumped. Ah hell, ah hell. The harsh crackle of Russian voices split the silence, accompanied by the distinctive ratcheting of weapons being readied. A squad of Spetsnaz operators were carefully approaching through the debris field, assault rifles leveled at the two surviving Marines. Pickett wearily raised his rifle in submission, too drained and emotionally broken to even consider fighting back any longer. Drop your weapon, Americansky. One of the Russians ordered in heavily accented English. You are prisoners now. Deacon gently laid the sergeant's body down, struggling to his feet in a futile gesture of resistance. A thousand-yard stare overtook the young Marine's expression as the reality of their hopeless situation truly sank in. 
Around them, gunfire and explosions still echoed through the remnants of Narvik as the battle continued to rage unabated. You want a prisoner? Deacon rasped, holding up his one good arm. Here, here's your prisoner. In one swift motion, he drew his sidearm, pressed the muzzle under his chin, and pulled the trigger. The muffled report of the 9mm pistol split the air like the breaking of a terrible silence. Pickett watched in numb horror as Deacon's headless corpse crumpled to the shattered floor, twitching momentarily before going still. The Marine simply stared at his fallen friend as the Russian squad approached with rifles at the ready. There were no words, just a deep, bone-chilling cold that settled into the pit of his stomach, far colder than the Arctic winds whipping over the battlefield. As rough hands seized him, Pickett could only ponder how many more would die before this brutality ended, how many more would fall before the Russian bear finally grew weary of the bloodshed. He could only hope that the reinforcements were close, for Narvik could not withstand another night like this. And if they did not come soon, there would be nothing left to reinforce. 